Uh, oh, wait, shoot, it's nighttime? Wait, what's going on? It has been about two weeks since I last recorded an episode of this. Uh, what has happened since then? Not really a lot. Um, some stuff, sure, but honestly not a lot of stuff has happened, because not a lot of stuff happens. But, hey, I need a new episode for a couple of days from now, and... Okay, awesome. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, I can make love potions. I just need the right stuff for that. Ah! Oh, well, something is ready to be harvested. Um, I'm guessing that all of the uh, colored flowers are... Good, good. Right, it has been a few weeks, and I'd forgotten about this little thing, which I'm guessing is still accurate. You know what? It's time to get more uh, golden pumpkins. I forgot, I can use these seeds. Yeah, a lot of skill orbs. A lot of general runes. Um, right, in the last episode we went up by about 3,000 levels. I would wager a guess to say that we're probably ready to experience the, um... We're probably ready to go back in the Sharon's maze and just do a couple of episodes where we just run around in there. And do everything that that has to offer. And speaking of acquiring things, let's go into here. And let's go and grab... Where do we go and grab... Right, right. The scythe and the till. Let's grab some more pumpkin seeds. And, I don't know, let's just fill up the rest of these fields, you know? Figure, let's have a day of just filling the field back up. Um, gosh, how awesome would it be to just have a guest for things? Anyway, this is... I've been wanting to talk about the channel a lot in other episodes. Um, like I had said before, I updated the channel somewhat. I'm getting new stuff put in. Doing new things here and there. Um, so yeah, for the rest of the month of December, things are going to be going in the order that they are generally going. And then, after December, I have a whole list of stuff that I plan on doing. Uh, where's my list? Here it is. So the actual, like, order of videos. Staying most of the same. So for the foreseeable future, I'm trying to read the list while also not moving what, from what I'm doing. Uh, Sundays will be Get in the Car, Loser. Yeah, um, until that's done. It can't be, probably won't be actually 50 episodes, right? It, it can't be 50 episodes. It totally could be a 50 hour game. Oh god, for just 50 hours of the same stuff over and over again, I really hope that they keep up with the jokes, because that's the... That's the best part of playing, is the humor. If they can't keep up with that, then... Oh gosh, 50 hours is gonna get stale. So anyway... 
have, what am I saying? Right, Sundays is getting the car looser. Monday, Mondays will be sort of the necromancer. Uh, fun game, probably only a couple of out, a couple of uh, episodes left on it until I'm done with that. So I'm not expecting that to last, you know, too, too much longer. Uh, Tuesdays is gonna be Noita, and I'm basically gonna just keep playing Noita until I get bored with it, which might last a few months, because, hey, one out. Yeah, that's a game I can literally just, I can literally just go on and play that for like five, six, seven hours. Well, I can literally just go on and play that for like five hours and be fine. Uh, been working with mods on that to get... Yeah, lately I've been playing it modded just to get a sense of, hey, this is what I can expect from the game. And then eventually I'm going to go unmodded and try to, you know, I want to at least, quote unquote, beat the game without mods. But it seems, from what I have seen of it, it looks like that's a task that just takes a long time to do, flat out. So I might be on that for a while, and then like when I actually finally go for a run, I'm, I, I don't know, I'd like to find a way to like save the game. Because it's like, oh, run all the way to the right, get to the street, okay, now run all the way down here, do this thing, now go all the way here and do that thing, and it's like, a lot of junk that doesn't seem so preferable, you know? Um... Let's see, cook with the mixer, what do I still want? Right, I have that. I should have enough emery flowers, but I need everything else. It's already past 10. And I need to go to the fields, because the winter field should be good now. So it's like, oh, go all the way right to get to this tree, get the thing, get the stone, get, and then like hope to get like, I don't know, a drill thing, whatever. I still want to see if the, if the stone that turns everything into dirt uh, makes the gods angry. And if so, then I'm going to have to hope to get the perk that allow, that makes it so the gods don't get angry at me so I can drill my way straight through those areas. Uh, if you flat out get better at playing the game, and get lucky for the first perk to be something I can really use. So I think I might have to spend a lot of time just on the run getting the things that I need. As opposed to, you know, just solid running through everything. Didn't water that area. Uh, right. That's... Tuesdays. Uh, it was... Wednesdays used to be Slay the Spire. That's what it's going to be for the rest of this year. But I don't want two ongoing things to be two days in a row. So instead, Wednesdays are going to be 2D Top D until that's done. And then I'm going to have some uh, Nikolai's Pirates. Uh, for the foreseeable future, I'm just going to do all of the puzzles in that game. Because you can just play the puzzles and those are fun. <laughs> Or at least that one puzzle is a lot of fun. I'll play through those, and then I'll find something else to do. Thursdays, as I mentioned, Slay the Spire. I can make two or three episodes with every new modded character that comes out. So as long as they keep coming out with a new modded character every two to three weeks, I basically have an infinite amount of content. So I don't really have to worry about, oh my gosh, what if... Blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, sure, maybe eventually down the line I'll get bored of it, but it's not always the same thing over and over again like Noita is. Because I'm using mods to enhance the experience and to change it up, and maybe eventually there'll be a whole overhaul mod and change the way that... Hello, Cinnamon. And change the way that the whole thing gets experienced. And they'll have basically nothing to worry about from that point on. Um, uh, 
Oh no. Okay, okay. I need... Where's the stuff? Where's the stuff? Mix some medicine. Where's my Greenifer Plus? Greenifer Plus, I need some of you. Yeah, yeah. Um... So let's make 18 of this. Formula C. I can either just buy the Formula C or grow fire flowers. I'm gonna just go and buy some Formula C. Thank you. Hello, what's up? I literally have no more requests left. I should have gotten a nicer reward then. Hey, here's the medicine recipes, two of the three of which you already have. Level 10, level 10, level 10. Oh, I've only shipped out level 3 emery flowers. Oh, shoot. Um, right, I want... Seven hundred and eighty of those owned. We should be fine. And wait a second. Let's go back to you. Show me some seeds and groceries. Okay, awesome. I already have half of those. Nice. Um, I'm just going to speed things up and buy a lot of gold pumpkin seeds. Okay, wait, how many do I actually need? Because that would be 36, 72. 72, 140. 140. Uh, two, oh, 200. And like 40. I need about 240 gold pumpkin seeds just to get my farm done. 72. Yeah, yeah. If I get... Um... 70, 171 should be a fair even amount. And then just buy gold pumpkins, fill up the rest of my inventory with level 10 gold pumpkins to toss in the fridge. If I can get 149, that would be perfect. Thank you, Blossom. Uh. Alright, awesome. Now I have all of the golden pumpkins I need for the uh, emery stew for today. Okay, okay. All of this is good. Oh, right, right, right. I also need corn. I think I have some corn, though. I have a little bit of corn. I need to go and buy more corn, and I'm pretty sure corn was for sale. It's uh, Monday, it's not a holiday. All right, Coolio. Um, let's use this, oh. Effectively anything under 100. Quite a few 88s. It's kind of surprising, honestly. Oh god, no. This whole field needs uh, formula C's. Just the whole field. Gotta take care of things now. Oh, right. Uh, recent news. I've been trying to get my VR to work. Uh, with specifically playing through Skyrim VR as a new series that will probably be wind up being uploaded on Fridays. Um, oh, right, right. Oh, that's right. That was the thing that I was going to do. Um, next year, I'm going to continue doing Rune Factory 4 every other day until Rune Factory 5 comes out. They'll be doing Rune Factory 5 every other day instead. But on the alternate days, 
uh, what I have now is a new video coming out on all of the alternating days. And that, as it turns out, is a lot of work to uh, keep trying to do. So instead of that, I'm going to have um, a whole different series. I'm going to be playing through a game that I have honestly heavily enjoyed. A game that I have, in fact, beaten, so it's kind of a lie for the channel, but, like, whatever, it's my channel, I can do what I want with it. Uh, and a game that I can hopefully... To be fair, I can get guests for Rune Factory. Random guests for Rune Factory, but... Hopefully I can find at least one person to occasionally come on and chat with it. Uh, other people who also like the game, enjoy it, and know what it's all about and stuff. I'm going to drink some pineapple juice because my runes are looking low, and pineapple juice is just good for that. Speaking of pineapple juice being uh, good, I have the I have a whole thing of like tropical sorbet here. It's really good because I haven't had anything sweet for like ever, and it's also really seriously cold. Uh, I'm gonna formula see all of these. Just to be safe. Actually, wait, hold up. All oh, right. Um, I'm gonna have to... Not quite. I'm gonna have to go back to here. Find the hammer, because you need the hammer to take out seeds. That's what I remember. Hello, Cinnamon! Are you coming? Yep, you're coming up. And now I have the blanket on my legs, so... So your claws don't hurt as much, baby. See, I have a big old plan for that, and that will be coming out soon enough. So, uh, so that, yeah, because trying to find, you know, s you, uh, three and a half new games every week to play, specifically games where I won't want to just keep making a bunch of videos for, is going to be hard. So I'm going to do that for the rest of this year. And then I'm thinking I'll drop it so, Fridays can go and be new game day. So, Monday is get in the car, loser. Tuesdays is Sword of the Necromancer. Again, both those are until the game is over and then I'll play something else. Uh, Tuesdays with Noita. Yes. Wednesday is... I don't think I'll be doing 2D Top D next year because I think I only have about maybe two episodes left of it. So, but I will be doing some Nicolas Pirates, because that's a classic, or at least it should be considered a classic. All right, doing some of that, and then of course finding new things. So, so Tuesdays and Thursdays are going to be Noita and Slay the Spire for the foreseeable future. Sundays, Mondays, and Wednesdays are uh, to change. Um. Oh, wait, no, no, I'm looking at my schedule again. Right, Fridays are still going to be the miscellaneous day. And while Saturdays now are Scarlet Nexus, instead, Saturdays are going to be the new days. I'm going to find some new game to play on Saturdays. All for the midnight uploads, because the, uh... Yeah, all for the same uploads, and then for the noontime uploads are going to be the, um... The other stuff, whatever. Well, you know, not cat, but I have a cat. So, close enough. Uh, health of the field is good enough for now. Speed of field is solid. This field can be taken down. Oh, 
Oh, right. The field just started, like, growing. Already? Oh, shoot. Um, hold on. I need to spend a moment or two. Wait, what's the town event? Oh, right, that. Okay, anyway. So yeah, uh, Scarlet Nexus is being taken off of the schedule. But in exchange, Fridays are going to continue being miscellaneous days where I'll just upload whatever. And surely after I finish either get in the car, necromancer, uh, pirates, or pirates, then I'll continue on with Scarlet Nexus, which again is fun, but only seven days in a week, and I want both Noita and Slay the Spire on slots. To be fair, now that I'm thinking about it, I could have Noita and Slay the Spire alternate weeks, but I think having both of them, because those are both very easy to record games. Rune Factory is also very easy to record. Uh, let's talk. Show me stuff. There we go. Let's buy 300 golden patates, thanks. So we're close at 1800, so we're fine, we're fine. We have a little bit longer that we can keep going. But yeah, Scarlet Nexus is fun. I hope to record and upload more, but for the time being, get in the car. No. And then of course, Friday with the new things like, hey, uh, I uploaded a new game, or whatever, it's like, hey, on a Saturday, I actually recorded two episodes of a new game instead of just one. It's like, well, put the first one on the Saturday, second one on the next Friday. Yeah, put the next, second one on the next Friday, and then have a different game on that Saturday, kind of a thing. Or, heck, if I actually run out of ideas for what to do, I could just record some Scarlet Nexus, put that on a Friday. The Friday upload can be anything, but it should be an hour of a gameplay. Heck, if I, uh, if I manage to get down to it and record some Commander gameplay, I could totally put that up for a Friday. Oh my gosh. Do I dare. I had this brilliant idea quite a while ago where I'd play through a Commander game, a uh, solo four-player game, writing down all, and like write down like, a plot to go with the story, and then animate the whole thing to up to uh, upload it. It would be very, very simple animations, because it's me working on it, or it would be me working on it. Very simple thing. Put in the cards, get everything done, and then just, hey look, here's me voicing four characters at once, uh, playing through a game. I have my own little script, but the game itself would have been a live game. Like, it's not... Where we are. Write down a game as it happens. Write down a script as it happens. And then, after the fact... What's up? It's a script of a... You know, kind of like a recorded live type thing. Whatever. Yeah. Record the stuff as it happens, and then just make it look fancier after. Whatever the case might be, because I'm sure I can't explain it. It would be a fun project to do, but it would take so long to get done. Come again, okay? Ooh, I could do some of my uh, Arch Enemy Plane Chase stuff again. I could write another story of that. Get a nice animation of that. It's like, hey, y'all! Emma is playing some Commander! To be fair, all I have to do is put, like, EDH gameplay. Uh, in the title, I'm sure to get some easy views. Throw it on in my uh, magic service, like, yo, self-promotion, I made a thing! It's not a very good thing, but it's a thing! Rune Factory 4. Which kind of is the tagline of this whole channel. Let's go. <laughs> it's not a very good thing, but it's a thing! <laughs> 
I like things. Don't you like What's things? That? Probably don't quite like how I pronounce the word things, but... What you gonna do about it? What I'm gonna do about it is have some sherbet. <laughs> the one problem with the sherbet is that it's like so soft that as soon as I uh, get a spoonful, I immediately just want to swallow this sherbet sorbet. Sherbet sorbet. Are those two different things or are those just two pronunciations of the same sorbet? Nonsense, and I'm... Oh my gosh, all the golden vegetables! Wow, this would have been handy. And there's... My back hurt a little. And there's corn! Uh, with these stats that we have now, including 33,000 int, we really gotta go into the Sharant's maze and do the stuff there, but I want to make all of my fields have the golden pumpkins now. And then go and do the Sean's Maze nonsense. Later, come take a look! It's in a book! Gosh, I can't believe that I was so distracted I almost missed the uh, window for buying stuff at the store. Sure, I'll write a new diary entry, why not? But yeah, two weeks ago, had someone's like, hey, let's VC it Well. And, like play a game and like whatever let's chat about stuff and then we just talked for hours and it was great I did so much recording wait what do I need I need the red thing um here's the potions here's the formula aid. do we mention we have a Bloody lot of health. Um, right, cannot make the 15th. Can only make 14. Every oh, right, I have some level 9 uh, golden pumpkins. Hopefully those won't affect the level of this. These are still all level 8. Okay, they're all level 8 still. So I got my formula stuff. I got my stuff. I'll, I can make the things. It'll be fine. I'll be fine. But yeah, just having someone and just just having someone to VC with for a couple of hours while I just play a game to record is super nice. Oh yeah, I can I can just imagine now getting back into my uh, Shadowrun group to play more missions and just basically just recording speed up. Recording uh, commentary less footage for speed up for hours. What I used to do was get into the Shadowrun games. Because the first like two to three hours of the mission of the... The first two to three hours of the four to five hour session. And sometimes it's up to four hours. It's just planning. Like here's what the mission is. And then it's just everyone bouncing ideas off of each other of what they can do to get the job done. And I just, I put in one or two ideas and it's like, buddy, this would probably work. Tell me why it wouldn't. And then they're all like, oh, but what if we like, just, what if we kidnap a security guard to take it, to take his like ID and stuff and then we can like have a key card access to the building. But we have to make sure that the building doesn't realize that they have a kidnapped security guard. So we'll have to send in a replacement and as a body double. Well, now we have to like figure out how to make one of us look like a security guard. Well, first we have to find a security guard who looks like one of us. Uh, and then we have to you know, like uh, trail the security guard and like find it to kidnap them in order to get access to the building. It's like, or I could pick a lock. It's not that hard. I have an electronic lock picker and like 20 dice in lock picking. I can just pick the lock. This isn't a hard, this isn't supposed to be a hard run. Like I can, we can wait until like nightfall. I can go and pick the lock and nobody will be the riser. Cause this is an easy difficulty run on the on, on the offset. Like, right out the gate, this is supposed to be easy. 
we don't have to do all of this trickery stuff with kidnapping a guard. But they don't listen to me because, you know, they're new to the game and excited with to uh, experience the whole make a complicated plan thing. So what I would always do is put on my VR headset and put on like Beat Saber or something, but on like mute and just go and do that with my headphones on so I'm still part of the conversation. I don't have to watch them, we're just chatting on Discord so I don't have to see what's going on. And yeah, I can be part of the plan and talking stuff and if they need me to roll something, I'll pause my game, turn around and like roll the thing. But we don't have like webcams on or anything. So all they might notice is I might be slightly uh, out of breath. That would be like the only thing that they would really notice. But yeah, just... <laughs> it's like, hey, listen, I know that you want to uh, treat this whole Shadowrun thing with like dignity and class and stuff, but we're not on the run yet. We're in the planning stages and I want to lose some weight. So I'm going to do some like fit boxing, beat saber, whatever. Well, you plan out with that, because... Because, hey, I can lose some calories while I do this and play the game. And it gives me a good excuse to just stand there and punch the sky. <laughs> but I could always just change that over to just doing this. You know, making gold juice and levelizers and taking care of the fields and whatever. And... Yeah, a full speed up episode is four hours of playing for a one hour video. To put that in perspective, I upload two hours of footage a day. If I would, if they were both speed up for whatever reason, that would be eight hours of recording. And if I want to speed up, I also have to do editing. So that's uh, not necessarily a lot of editing work, strictly speaking, but it is some editing work to be done. Along with the full, you know, eight hours of recording for two out of what could be two hours. The only upside really is that I can do other stuff while I do that. Like, when I do the fast forward recordings on this game, on the Boon Factory, or on other Switch games, I usually just put something on YouTube, mute the microphone, mute the desktop so you can only hear the game audio, and you can't tell if I'm that I'm watching something on my computer while recording. So yeah, I'll usually wind up doing that. Um Cook with a mixer. Let's make some pineapple juice. Let's make 13 pineapple juice. See, I have all of that going for me and whatever else. Yeah, Shadowrun is enjoyable, but it, there is just so much about it that's like, oh, well, you can't do that because you're just not good enough yet. It's like, oh, well, you could try to do that, but that would be suicide, so don't try to do that. It's like, oh, you want to make an interesting character? Well, don't. It's lame. And it's like... Buddy, I can always just make a new character. But then, of course, yeah, a new character when... Oh, gosh, you see these... God, what was that? Was it a Shadowrun thing that I was in? Is that the Shadowrun or D&D? I think it was a Shadowrun thing I was in. Uh, with every run you go on, you get money and you get some experience. So you can use it to like upgrade your character and stuff. So I was going in with this group with a brand new character. Like, zero experience and like zero money, effectively. After buying, you know, starting gear, starting stats. I, then playing alongside people who had characters who had been playing for years... So they had, you know, it's like, I might have my skill, my, my stats might average out to be three. Their stats would average out to be like nine. I put like every single point I possibly could into one particular skill, which is what you're supposed to do in Shadowrun. And I had like 17 dice and that was like the most I could do. And like everyone else in the party had 20 plus dice in that. So the one thing that I built myself to do Everyone else could just do better because they had the points to spend. So they could just do everything I can do 
but strictly better. So I was just there just to be like, hey, yo, what up? I can't fight. I can't do skills. I'm new to the game, so I can't even, like, plan out the, uh... I can't even do the planning as well as them. Because I don't know all the tricky stuff. It's like, oh, I'll just, uh, you know, hack into electronic locks. Like, oh, that wouldn't work because they've got electric mainframes. And it's like, what am I supposed to do? It's like, oh, well, uh, you could do this. Like, nope, the entire rest of the party does that better than me. It's like, oh, well, you could, you know, assist them for a plus two. So, you know, make them do better. It's like, why? It's like, why don't you just buy another plus two item? To make yourself, you want to make yourself better instead of, you know, dragging a whole person along. If you, it's like, your character's filthy stinking rich. You could just buy an NPC and have them come in to assist you on runs if you need that plus two bonus so badly. Why am I here? It's like, oh, because it's fun. It's like, it's fun for you because you can do everything. Not fun for me because I can do, like, nothing. Oh, well, that's your own problem. Uh, after you play for as long as we have, it's going to be fun for you, too. It's like, I'm not going to get that far along. I'm not going to play like this for years on the hopes that, oh, well, maybe I might have fun eventually. But apparently I was in the wrong about that, and I should have just, uh, you know, toughened it out, stuck it out, played a game that was un not enjoyable for years just for... Hey, maybe I might be able to do something in a game once. Also, I think that was the same group with the DM who decided to start an argument with me on, like, my first ever mission. Well, technically, I think it was my second ever mission. About, like, oh, well, the ceiling is 10 meters off the ground. So if you wanted to fall off the third floor balcony, you would fall 30 meters and you would just die. No, you have to keep running away. You have to... No, you have to get away from this person as fast as possible, because I say so as the DM. I'm not going to explain why in lore that works. I'm telling you as the DM that you have to do this. So you are going to climb up the rope that you have back to the top of the building, go back inside the building. The thing you're running away from, for the record, is inside the building in one of the rooms. Go down the whole stairwell, you know, past the floor that that thing is in that it could definitely reach the stairwell before I could and then go out through the front door and that is how you have to run away from it. I am the DM and I'm telling you that this is the this is definitely what's going to happen. It's like okay cool uh how about you just play my character for me and I'll go do some other thing instead. Why don't you just go and write a book so you can control all of the characters. Of course I'm in the I'm in the bad for suggesting something like that because, oh, how dare you uh, take that sort of attitude where back in middle school and I am your teacher and I am disappointed in you not uh, playing well with others. You ever have like one of those friends while growing up that was like, no, if you're going to play with me, you're going to have to play with me my way. Uh, I get to be the hero and you get to be like the villain that I beat up. No, it's not pretend beat up. I'm just going to beat you up. And then if anyone comes to uh, wonder why I'm beating you up, you're going to say that we're playing a game together and that you want me to beat you up. Was that just me? I moved around a lot when I was young. I didn't really have friends. I can hear you now. It's like, gosh, that's sad. It's like, yes, my life was sad. Pity me. If you dare. I don't have to keep moving forward. Um, yeah, no, this whole thing could use more yellow. Oh gosh, I'm gonna need more stuff. 
So these are all level 10 seeds, so these should all be all fine and well and good, so I won't need the uh, formula stuff. Necessarily. Uh, yeah, planting seeds is fine. But yeah, going up, uh, let's see, how many times did I move to a new school? Uh, when I was in, halfway through kindergarten, I moved to a new school, then after grade two, I moved to a new school to start grade three. Halfway through grade three, I moved to a new school. This is where it starts getting complicated, because I think I had, between grade, the rest of grade three and grades four, five, and six, I was in two schools, but I don't remember when I moved, because that's part of the period of my life I barely remember anything. Repressed memories, sure, whatever. But I do remember I was at two different schools during that period. Uh, yeah, I'm re very certain I was at two different ones. And then grades seven and eight, I was at one school. Terrible school, by the way. Uh, grade nine, I went to one school for no, no, I went to one school for a half of grade 9, and then moved to another school for the other half of grade 9. That school is going to come back. Uh, grade 10, went to a school for the first half of grade 10, then the second half of grade 10, I spent in yet another school. So yeah, what is it? Half of kindergarten, then... I th think my second half of kindergarten was at a different school, and then grade 1 and grade 2 was at a third school. Half of grade 3 was a school. And then between the rest of grade three, four, five, and six was two schools. So school five and school six. Uh, school seven was grade seven and eight. First half of grade nine in school number eight. And then second half of grade nine in another school. First half of grade 10 was in my 10th school. And then the second half of grade 10 I think, yeah, for the rest of high school, I jumped between two other schools that I'd already mentioned. So that's 10 schools. And then I also did distance learning. Uh, first, I did a year of distance learning with classes for most of my classes, going to one school for drama uh, for grade 11. And then my grade 12 was just distance learning. And then after all of that, I was like, oh, well, I'm still like two credits short from graduation. So I took an extra math course through distance learning. And I was credit short from graduation because my dad decided to move us halfway through grade 10 and I lost like 30 potential credits. I lost a lot of potential credits because all of those courses, except for like one of those courses, a half year course, and then all the rest were full year courses. So halfway through grade 10, I had like two credits, whereas other people who took a half year course instead might have like, I don't know, 20, because they would have like math and science and social and gym. But, be, but, but my dad said, hey, no, we have to move halfway through grade 10. So, hey, screw all of those classes. I had to retake them except for that one class, which I, should have failed in any way because I missed half the classes because it was after school one day a week and I totally forgot about it constantly because hey and frankly nobody cared that I barely went there and I still got the credits for it anyway so it doesn't even matter so yes yeah, not just a uh, kindergarten to 12 but then I took an extra year of courses just for a math class to have enough credits to graduate high school I went to 10 different schools, plus online learning. How many friends did I have through all that? That's a good question. How many friends do I remember from all of that? That's the better question and more important. Um, first half, okay. From the second half of kindergarten through the end of grade two, I had one friend, uh, Jesse. Uh, you know, we played games together and stuff. It was a lot of fun. We argued about uh, him potentially sleeping over at my house for one particular weekend where he was insistent that he didn't, but I was insistent that he did. And even my parents remembered that he did, so joke's on you, he did. I still need like six more seeds, but I'm sure I'll get them like tomorrow, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah. And then... Uh, Oh, 
Oh no, that's right, that's right. I was ah shoot, right, whatever. Uh wait, do we even take the No, we don't take the form raid because we can't make the levelizers. That's right. We'll take uh We'll take the juice. Wait. That's not, that's not pineapple juice. Um So yeah. I have first half of kindergarten, don't remember any of my friends, but from the second half of kindergarten to the end of grade two, I had one friend named Jesse. Uh grade three first half of grade three I had a friend named Theodore. And then second half of grade three until I left I think second half of grade three, why, but one of those two next schools, I had a friend, I think his name was Justin. So that's three. Barely remember Theodore, by the way. Barely remember Justin. I just remember uh, making it sound like uh, Gaston from the Gaston song, song at one point. I remember that, so Justin. Um, I think the other school I was in, I had a friend. Yeah, one of the schools I had a friend named Mark. I had a friend named Morgan, but he wasn't from school. It was a uh, child of a co-worker of one of my parents. So I, had that, so I had Morgan as a friend, but I think for a while he was kind of my cousin. I don't know. A lot of weird stuff going on there. Very strange. Very weird coincidence that... Yeah, I think it was my dad's co-worker's kid. So my dad's... Yeah, but that my stepdad's brother wound up marrying my dad's old co-worker. I don't understand things. I don't understand things, but it was a weird coincidence, I guess? I don't know. I don't know how things work. So now, yeah, uh, Jesse, Thea... No, wait. Was the one in grade 3 Theodore? I don't think so. No, no, no. That's right, that's right. Theodore was a friend from a school that I had in like grade five, six. That's right. Uh, Justin was in the like three, four. I did have a friend in the first half of grade ten school, but I don't remember who it was because I don't think that was a Theodore. And then I had Justin, and it's I think it was yeah. I met Theodore. We like played like Yu-Gi-Oh and like computer games and stuff. Met Mark, we played N64 stuff, and we played on like the playground, whatever. Uh, grade 7, 8. No new, no friends from that school, I tell you that much. Uh, first half of grade 9. I met some people, but none. I think there was this girl named Emma? Not sure. She never gave me a name. I heard someone talking to her once. I uh, don't remember any of my friends there. I had some people I played Xbox Live with, but I don't remember them. Uh, second half of grade 9, nothing. First half of grade 10, don't think I actually made any friends there. There's some people I was friendly with. I was in a dance class there. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but again, we moved. Uh, I think... Okay, let's start with one each and move on to like two. Okay, okay. Uh, and then throughout high school, didn't make any friends. I was just trying to survive. And technically I did. I technically survived high school. It was middle, yeah, it's middle school that I don't remember anything about. High school, that was just a nightmare, flat out. Gosh, with all the bullying, that I got from my time through school. 
It almost would have been just better to have just come out of strands, like, somehow find, you know, just tell it to the people there. It's like, you know what? Screw you. This is who I am. You want to make fun of me for it? You go right ahead. At least it will be more accurate. Yeah, call me translators instead of insinuating that I like guys. Because, hey, I might be openly gay, but I'm still not attracted to men. Yeah, that was the thing I had issues with as a kid. It's like, if, uh, <laughs> yeah, in middle school, you know, people, how, you know how middle school is, or they were like, oh, you like men, and that makes you wrong, and it's like, but I'm not interested in men. It's like, if they had, like, so it's like, oh, you want to be a girl, that's weird. It's like, well, I mean, that is at least accurate. <laughs> uh... So yeah, that is, that is accurate, yes. That is a fair assessment of my wants and desires, yes. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm like out of magical potions. Um, I should be fine, right? Even without more potions and stuff? Actually, now that I really think about it. Nope, anyway. This should be fine. I bought the other watering can just in case. Oh god! <laughs> Did you even one shot that thing? But yes, I do indeed believe that my life would have been at least slightly different if I had been born a girl, but. Considering the way my parents are, or at least the way my parents were, and the way that, uh, the way that children are, I don't necessarily know if my life would have been better, because it seems very likely that if I had been born a girl, that my parents would never have spent the time to, like, play video games with me. My aunt, maybe, maybe not. Debatable. But at the very least, my parents probably wouldn't have, considering how opposed they were to any idea of me doing anything girly or gay growing up. Yeah, like, go to the bathroom and, like, instead of using, like, you know, the hand dryer in the public washroom, I just, like, uh, you know, shake my hands dry. And my dad would see that's like, oh, don't do that. That's what gay people do. And... Like, so, yeah, I had, had a thought once that I mentioned to my mom uh, about, hey, you know, they have, like, the little, like, tables in the pizza. What if they had, you know, like, little chairs and stuff as well? You can, you can make a whole furniture set. It's like, yeah, that's a dollhouse. You want do you want, uh, you don't want to play with dolls, do you? And it's, like, so much hostility over it over their childhood doing anything that could be perceived as girly or gay, and guess what? I'm both. Yeah, screw both of you. And yes, of course. Talk to them about it now, they'll deny it. It's like, oh, I would never do something. It's like, nope, you absolutely did. Uh, that's part of a uh, little thing called trauma that I have going on for me. You might have heard of the concept, trauma. Yes, I know, it's very exhausting. Um, so, all that things considered, and considering that video games are stereotyped as being a boyish thing, like, yeah, sure, my dad would have still had the Nintendo when I was born, because that's how I started. My dad had a... Uh, original, uh, and... Middle N64, original Nintendo, not a Super Nintendo, original NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. And, oh gosh, it's level 8 that I played, that like we played on, we played Super Mario Bros. To be fair though, to be fair, I, my mom also played on it. I do remember playing it with both of my parents, mom and dad. So if I had been born a girl, they might have still done... Uh, video games and stuff with me as well That's the biggest thing. I don't know if 
and I can't rely on them to answer honestly if I ask. If I had been born as a girl, a signed female at birth, if they would have still played video games with me when I was little, because that shaped a huge part of who I came to be eventually. If little, like, one-year-old, they still would have little one-year-old me sitting in front of the TV playing Super Mario Bros. This, for the record, by the way, I still have that exact same uh, NES and that exact same copy of Super Mario Bros. sitting in my living room right now. Just, that's just a little something I find pretty awesome. But yeah, if they would have still, you know, played with, played that with me or not, because that would have shaped uh, a lot of stuff. Excuse me, they tried to hide the protein. Did you see that? <laughs> They're hiding it behind a box. No, don't have any sort of rose of you and abs. Alright, 3 a.m. Oh gosh, I have to go all the way back now. But yeah, uh, I do remember looking in the mirror at myself at a young age, like, I don't know, 10 or something, and thinking, like, it doesn't matter if I become the most attractive man in the world, that would not be what I wanted, what I would like to be. So why should I care about my appearances if I'm never going to be able to look uh, any sort of way that I would actually want to look? And like, honestly, if I had a therapist and I find who knew about like, yeah, if trans stuff was more open in the world, I would, could, I would have been so classified as trans like so easily by any therapist or teacher or just anyone I talked to if they knew about transness. Because that's how I was well, well before I even knew that it was a thing that people experienced. And at age 17, when I found out, it's like, oh, no, this is a thing. This is like an actual thing, being trans, yeah. People, you know, born in the wrong body and want to fix it, yeah. That's, like, just a thing. It's like, well, that's good. It's not literally only me. I just simply don't have anyone to talk to about it. Except, you know, this now group of people online. And once you know that being trans is a thing, gosh... People say, oh, well, only, like, 0.5% of the population is trans. Like, are you sure? Because it really feels like a lot of people are trans. I went to a random bar. Not a gay bar. Just some random bar for karaoke night. I found, like... And I found someone else who is trans. Complete stranger. Not only I found someone who is trans, I found someone who was comfortable enough to... Tell me that she was trans. Because the room might have like, you know, 20 trans folk in it, and you might never know if you just, you know, if they just don't tell you. Like, that's the thing. They might just not tell you, and then you might think, oh, well, nobody is trans. Yeah, nobody wants to out themselves to you, buddy. There's a reason for that. It's called safety. Nobody feels safe around you, specifically. You might want to look into yourself a little bit. So for 5600, that's okay thing. Pineapple juice. Cheese fondue, no. And sleep. And that would be a nice day's worth of work. Uh, let's put all of these things back. And... Okay, okay. Put that back, put that back. But these two gotta be shipped. <laughs> Oh gosh, I feel like I went through 
a lot of uncovering of trauma today. I don't know what I should do about any of it, but... Again, this channel is just my cheap therapy. An hour at a time, I don't have to go off uh, downtown, take a bus or two uh, in public. I don't have to pay $300 for an hour of talking. I can just sit down to the camera. Well, you know, sit down to the screen. I can play some game as a way to, like, lessen... I'm on something here. As a way to lessen the effect of a way to lessen the seriousness that comes from simply talking about a trauma. If I play a game, I have something to concentrate on with their trauma stories as a secondary topic, as opposed to if I were to just talk about it right offhand, that would be the primary focus, which makes it so much worse than, hey, focus on the game and also on the trauma instead of just on the trauma and if i associate this game with trauma that's just a sacrifice i have to be willing to make <laughs>